steroids in baseball. It's a big problem because it uh, it took away the confidence in all the records for a period of time. And the uh, great thing about baseball has always been through the years that a home run in 1910 was the same as a home run in 2010. But uh, during the steroids era, that changed because you now have a period of time where home runs or batting average or any long time statistic is now altered with the potential that uh, some players might have had an advantage, uh, some players might not have, and there's no way to know because uh, there's no testing. So the biggest problem is the confidence, uh, you know, the confidence that was always there in a, in a game that's been played for hundreds of years is now, uh, has been shaken. Steroid users in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I used to think that that was a bad thing and that there uh, was no way and you had to figure out who was doing it and who did it and if there was any suspect. But I thought a lot about it and now I think that uh, what you almost have to do is just say, you know, we don't know who did it, we don't know how many pitchers, how many batters, um, and we have to, unfortunately, uh, I think the lesser of the evils is just to respect the records, uh, whether they be accurate or not, um, and basically say, you know what, uh, it was a bad period, but it's no different than the dead ball era uh, when the baseballs were made um, a little bit soft and records were a little tainted and we just say you know uh, unfortunately there are some players uh, that were almost guaranteed to be clean chipper jones a couple of guys like that and unfortunately um, their records are going to be a little bit lower than the guys that were suspect but uh, i think that's just going to have to be one of those things that's just unfortunate uh, because i think that to leave a barry bonds out of the hall of fame um, considering what kind of athlete he was uh, on, on, you know, without even without any sort of uh, enhancement, uh, is a disservice to baseball. And uh, you can leave them out of the Hall of Fame, you can leave those guys out, but when you're telling your kids about home run hitters and uh, the game uh, in the 90s and early 2000s, um, you can't leave those people off. It did not happen. So I think you have to, uh, I think you have to put them through the selection process, and I think you have to look at their records and say, uh, you know, they hit the home runs. They were out there every day, and um, and uh, let it just be a part of baseball. Now, if I were commissioner and I had the power um, to make a ruling on the steroid era, I think it would be very simple. Um, I would not put anything, any asterisk in the record book. I wouldn't make any notations. Uh, I think I would quite simply... Um, just let it play out and let the let history call it what they want to call it, let the sports writers call it what they want to call it. And uh, as I said about the, the dead ball era, um, they didn't name it the dead ball era back then. Uh, it became that, and I don't think we should name it. I think that 50, 60 years, when it's been written about for 50 or 60 years, if they're still calling it the steroids era, then that's exactly what they call it. Um, unfortunate for the players that were clean, but again, uh, they had the bad fortune of playing during that time, uh, but the good fortune of knowing that they did what they did uh, purely on their ability. So I think you do absolutely nothing. You let history call it what they want to call it. When I think of the steroid era, I think of, uh, well, like everybody else, Barry Bonds, uh, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa. I think of players. Um, you know, I think, uh, unfortunately, that it was allowed to go on. I think that it, uh, it's hard to give a reason for it. But uh, the first thing I think about are the players that uh, seem so suspect. Um, and I guess it angers me a little bit that a game that I love uh, has a period of time and a group of players um, that... You know, took took away from baseball and took a took a period of the game and uh, created a, a pretty big problem in the game.
who's to blame? Uh, every player that made a decision every single day or once or a hundred times to inject themselves with a substance that they knew um, that they weren't supposed to be doing. Um, I blame the leadership of baseball uh, for turning the other way. Um, I blame the union, the, the uh, players' union, for even continuing to fight uh, full open testing. Um, I think that uh, it shows a lack of maturity and a, and a lack of respect for the game to continue to argue against testing when uh, it's been made pretty clear that the players are going to do what they can get away with, unfortunately. Um, but I blame the players. I blame the users uh, because they made a choice every single day that they did that to uh, do a disservice to the game.